All right, hello everyone. Going to be here covering some games tonight. Um, I will also be playing my own game, so um, if you guys start games as the stream goes on, just please either DM them to me or put them right in the ladder channel on the Discord. I'm going to get my game going now. Just making sure the stream is good. <laughs> It's my first time doing this on the dojo, so I just want to make sure I'm good. Alright. Alright, there we go. Alright, so this is my own game. Um, again, if you guys have your own games coming in, uh, please feel free to drop them. Okay, great. Alright, so the stream's working. Okay, so B6, let's go C4. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the... I'm just getting the chat open. Actually, just finished studying this stuff. <laughs> Festivity. If you're in chat, please mute. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Okay, so I'm not seeing any other games come in quite yet. Um, we'll just continue here. So night of six. Go knight f3. Actually, I want to start with e3 just to avoid the, the bishop taking on f3 lines. Alright, e6, and then here I'm going to play a3. And then he's going to have to answer the question of where he wants this bishop to go. Because usually the bishop coming to. Uh, oops. The bishop coming uh, to b4 is a very strong pin. It helps the knight get control of e4. I usually, I actually used to play this stuff as black, where you put the knight here and bring this other knight to f6. Sometimes play f5. All right, d5. We'll go knight f3. If you guys see me looking over, I'm just reading chat on my phone, so instead of having to open another window, and I don't have a dual monitor, so. Yeah, the ladder is just, like, a good way, like, yeah, so, E. Rosenberg, the ladder is just a tournament that the dojo hosts to, uh, you know, get people playing classical games at the longer time controls and, um, you know, get the dojo interacting more. Um, it's just a good, it's a really good tournament. I've played in it a lot of the time. Alright, so knight c6. Yeah, so once you guys get your game going, um, again, just DM it to me or put it in the ladder chat and, uh, sorry, at me there so I can see it. Alright. Um.
bishop e2. See if their game is up and running yet. Okay, not quite yet. All right, there should be seven. Um, let's just, I think I can just castle. I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with my dark squared bishop. I could also play b4 and put it on b2. Um, but I feel like after b4, c5 is a good move from black. With maybe rook a6. Or even a5, breaking it up that way. So I'm going to try to fight for e4 at some point. Okay, so castles. Hmm. I do like b4 though. b4, a5. I could play b5. But then a4 from black at some point. Yeah, like. Hey, Sophie. Yeah, I'm reading chat. Yeah, the only rule here is please don't uh, post moves about my game, but about any of the other games, as long as like you're making sure that's what you're talking about, um, you can comment on that. Hmm. Okay, yeah, so I'm looking at B4. A5, B5. Although if B4, A5, I could, I could just play C5 right away. So maybe B4, C5. I could also then just take on B5, on C5 and play rook b1 and just hit the light squared bishop. Put it on an awkward square. If bishop a6, I could just take on d5 and try to get them into an isolated pawn structure. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Steve, north. We'll get that open once it's there. Okay, not yet. All right. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and play b4 here. Yeah, so I'm really thinking like c5 here from black. Because a5, I can play c5 right away, and I don't have any issue with them taking on b4. Because just a takes... Oh wait, no, what am I saying? I have to play bishop b2 first. So a5, I don't know, maybe I just take on a5 actually. Hmm. All right, I think their game is up. Awesome, so we'll open up this. I'm not seeing it. It just opened a new tab for me, so I think I have to just follow one of them. Okay, uh, let me figure this out really quick. I think I have to go to... Oh wait, ah, jeez. Live chess. Have this game open here, and then awesome, there it is. All right, so 94, um, I can leave that for a sec, so let's have a look here. So we've got, it looks like a Tarash Karakhan, 
um, just basically transposes right into a class call. Uh, yeah, so these two actually, they played a training game in the uh, classical Caracon the other day. And, I mean, Rosenberg won, but it was, it was competitive. Uh, Steve actually had a good fight, so I'm interested to see this one. This is actually a really good line for black. Um, I'm pretty sure the ideas are just, you know, you get the doubled pawns, but the bishops are coming out really quickly. The knight's going to go to b6 or maybe, and then to d5, I think. Um, black, I'm pretty sure black plays g6, h5, and then castles short. And then, yeah, it's very dynamic from what I've seen out of it. I used to play the carrow, but I never played this line. Another line that can happen is uh, this line. Whoops. Yeah, G takes. That's the Bronstein Larson, I believe. All right, bishop d2. Am I missing? Can, can black not take on d4? Let me turn this off. Um, yeah, if queen takes d4, maybe white just plays knight f3 and just has a good lead in development. Can castle and play rookie one check. Um, yeah, so I'll check back in with this one once I make a move over here. This will gear up to be a strong game, I think. Rosenberg is a very strong national master. He actually beat me in round three of the uh, verified tournament that just finished up. All right, so 94 here. Um, wait, what? Erud. Sorry, I don't quite know who you are. Um, not sure what happened there. <laughs> I guess there was just, I guess bishop d3 just blundered the d-pawn. Um, Alright, so we're going to have a, a queen's gambit decline then. I mean a queen's gambit. So a slav. Yeah, right, I know Steve does play the slav. Um... Yeah, I thought so. I didn't think... I thought maybe knight f3, but, like, I mean, black's fine. Since that line is very quick of development for black, I'm not... I didn't think there'd be any trouble for them if they took the pawn. I mean, I would have played on, but... Um, okay, so here... I'm looking at bishop b2... Um, and then knight f6, and then I can play c5, I think. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, there's no, I don't know. I don't see what white can do out of that position. It's it's a little frustrating when you drop a pawn that open in the, that fast in the opening. Um, okay, yeah, so I'm going to play bishop b2. And then just get ready for c5, I think. I may consider like knight d2 and f3 as well. That could be an idea. Um, we'll check in again in a sec. Let's have a look here. So yeah, we just have a Slav. Um, I can't remember if... I can't remember if black plays the... Semi Slav, or I mean, if Steve plays a semi Slav or not. Yeah, okay, so semi Slav. 
Bishop g5, and then bishop e7, I believe, or knight d7, that's playable too. So the point here is a lot of the time, like, white plays e3, and then after d takes c4, bishop takes c4, b5, bishop d3, a6. So um, white is avoiding, no, sorry, white's playing for, uh, if d takes, they can play e4. And then uh, just have a good center against black's bad pawn structure on the queen side. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, I mean, h6. I'd be inclined just to play bishop b7 here. Just develop that way. Or even maybe just knight d7, actually, because I'm not too worried if white wants to take on f6. The pin's not really going to do very much long term. Eventually, h6 will be played. All right, so yeah, here it is. So I'd expect d takes c4 at some point, uh, either now or after knight d7. Um, h6 could also be played. K root springs, right. Oh yeah, the Moscow. I t yeah, the right, that's the, yeah, so okay, so you take, you take with the G pawn, right? You don't take with the bishop. And then you play F5 to get control over E4, I think. And then it's like knight D7, knight F6, knight E4. I think I'm remembering that correctly. All right, uh, coming back to my game. Knight DF6. Yeah, so I had two different plans here. Um, I'm looking at either knight d2 or c5 right away. Um, I like c5 because it helps with blunting the bishop. Um, I feel like a5 might be a way black counterattacks this though. Um, with knight d2, what I can do is either take, take, yeah, so I'm looking at knight d2, um, maybe c5 from black. All right, maybe there's not enough support over that square yet. And now that the knight has gone to f6, like they've doubled up the knights, um, after c5, like, I don't feel I'll have to worry about e5 as much because they've given me control over that. Flag ring! What? I'm streaming right now. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, what, so I was saying either c5 or knight d2. Um, I could also play knight e5. There hasn't been any moves over here in a bit. Oh, wait, yes, there has. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to take a minute to calculate a few things here. Um... Yeah, okay, I'm gonna play c5. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm horrible with tech. 
so I couldn't produce a film if I wanted to, Seth. I could try, it wouldn't go anywhere. Alright, let's jump back over here. So we left off like around here, so yeah, bishop e7, e3, knight d7, queen c2, h6, bishop f4. Okay. Yeah, so someone said in chat that bishop um, h4 was the anti-Moscow, and bishop takes f6 is the Moscow, and I'm, I'm remembering that. I saw that position a few days ago, and I couldn't remember what opening it came out of, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is, the Moscow variation. Um, okay. Castles. Yeah, so like at some point, black's gonna have to take on c4. That was a very quick move. White has been playing fast. I'm assuming this is just like known theory for white. Yeah, so I believe. As was being said, the Moscow is... Uh, I'm trying to analyze. Sorry. Yeah, so uh, over here, the Moscow was... Right here, h6, and then takes. And then takes here, and then I think you play like f5, bring this knight over here to f6, and then put it on e4, and I believe you take on c4 at some point. And then uh, the other line that was mentioned was uh, h6, and then bishop h4, which is the anti-Moscow, and then I think bishop e7. I don't know, I don't know the semi-slav very well. Um, anyway, let's hop back over here. Right. I mean, is there any reason why that wouldn't be done in one move? Because cause as I pointed out over here, like... Um, With bishop b, uh, sorry, with bishop g5, like if takes, there's e4 right away. And honestly, I don't know the theory here. I want to say maybe h6 now. And then if back, like g5. Here, b5. I don't know how bad this pawn structure is for black, but. This could be horrible. I haven't I haven't looked at this closely, but um yeah. Okay, so yeah, we'd a3 now. Knight f8 probably did. Yeah, that's going to go to g6. Um Yeah, see again like I don't know, I feel like black's playing a little too conservative. Just This is just my amateur eye on this game. But, again, I think white... I mean, I think black is going to want to take on c4 at some point. But now that there's so much control over e4, I find, like, that being hard for black to actually do. And then the issue of the light scored bishop comes into play... You can't play knight g6 now. So yeah, the knight goes back to d7. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to hop over here. So a6 was played. Um... So now what I could do is I could play knight e5, and I think I can play 
um, the threat of c6. Um, so like knight e5, but the, they could just plug it with c6 right away. But what then I could do there is play, so if knight e5, c6, I can play c takes b6, queen takes b6, knight a4, and put that knight on, b, uh, on c5. Um, I could also start with a rook c1. Um, and then take on, no, because I need that knight. Hmm. I do want to consider knight e5 again. The issue here is if because I want to get this rook going onto the e file as well, and g4 becomes weak, but I can always snap on e4 if need be. Yeah, okay. I think I think I'm just gonna go knight e5, um, and just you know threaten the world with a6. And again, b6. I think I would think of c6. It's good for me too. The only thing I have to look at is if b5, can I play c6? Like, will that pawn hold? Or. Um, another thing I'm looking at too, it's a little counterintuitive, but if, say, b5, c6, bishop b7, I play knight b3. Um, sorry, knight b1, just saying I want to play f3, and then the knight will have to go to g5, and then I can play h4 and trap the knight. Um, Yeah. All right, let's go have a look at Steve North and Rosenberg again. Okay, so we had... We stopped after h4, so... White takes on e5. Pawn takes, knight d7 takes, and e takes. Okay. Um, hmm. So... White has a lot of consideration here, because, I mean, I honestly don't love E takes. I think C takes is a little more, um, a little more concrete. Like, the idea here is, you know, get the bishop out, but where are you putting this knight? They, they just are. I think they just agreed to go for it. So, um, cause like, you know, a move that I think white can consider here is e6. Maybe not, maybe they're a little underdeveloped still. This bishop is not, oh yeah, they're not castled, but like I would, I would at least spend some time looking at e6. The only issue again is like white's not really developed that much yet and like a threat of e5 could be played. So, yeah, um, maybe just bishop d3, and then like knight b6. And honestly, white could probably get away with like either castling right away or playing bishop f5. Bishop c5. Um, I mean, okay, say so bishop d3, bishop c5. Play b4, maybe. Here. Yeah, I guess you. that's a good point. Um, I mean, you could try for some really active stuff again with e6, like here. So like if the pawn takes, we get this. Rook has to move, and then here. 
Then there's this move. I don't know, like, black is up a pawn, but do are they better here? Like, white's got the good bishop on d6. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to find a plan for white here, actually. Just the only thing is, like, again, this bishop's really bad. So if you can box it in for as long as possible. Rook takes. Yeah, rook takes. Bishop c4 here. Again, I want to play e4, but I'm not castled yet. So you have to, like, I don't know. And then just knight f6, and this knight's going to come to e4. Anyway, let's see what happened here. Okay, so takes, takes, e4. Can black just go like maybe knight b6 now? And if, uh, oh, we did play knight b6. Ooh, this could get a little dangerous. A little dangerous. Um, oops, maybe knight takes knight takes d5. Actually, just bishop c4, just build on it. And then white can get in castling. Yeah, bishop c4. And then probably bishop e6. Actually, a nice move for black if, yeah, if if there wouldn't be this pin. I was actually looking at f6, um, just because like the king's open. So f6 and f takes. Just trying to yeah, I'm trying to create something on this file. But it just it just doesn't work because of this lineup. So yeah, maybe bishop e6 first, and then some sort of f6 later on. Um, all right, I'm going to go check in with my game again. All right, so c6 is exactly what I was thinking would happen. Um, here, what I want to do is play b takes, and then after queen takes, play knight a4 hit the queen and then put my knight onto c5. And then if like takes, like, I don't know, the bishop or the knight should be taking there. I can't imagine they'll play bishop c8. Um, Or actually, what I could do now is play knight a4. Ooh, I have a bit of a plan here, actually. Knight a4, if b5, knight b6. Yeah, so uh, knight a4, if b5, knight b6, rook b7, f3 wins a piece. Yeah, let's go ahead and play knight a4, I think. Um, yeah, just knight a4. Because I'm threatening to win this pawn right now, so unless they want to take here and I'll take this, and then I can put the knight on b6 anyway. Um, and then just play f3. My pawns are going to get a little weird, but... 
I mean, it's a piece for a pawn, so. Hi, RKDKHS. How are you doing today? Um, okay, let's hop back over here. Okay, so. I mean, black's a little active. Yeah, so as I said, bishop e6, castles, and then queen a5. Um, the only thing here is like, what if just, if just b4 from white, just hit the queen, make the queen go back, probably to c7, but then there's like tricks because the knight can take, or you can play bishop to, yeah, no, that would lose some material. Hmm. Okay, so just gonna take now. I'm going to assume D takes. <laughs> I'm going to assume just D takes because, sorry, C takes D five. Um, I don't know. The bishop the bishop just needs to stay strong on e6. Okay. Yeah, my yeah, see my issue with this is you're create you're gonna create an isolated pawn without the support of a D pawn. Without the support of your light squared bishop. So like the issue kind of becomes this E pawn. It's gonna get really scary when it decides to go to E6. And it's going to be really easy for white to just gang up on this pawn via rook d4, uh, rook fd1, and so on. Just so everyone watching knows, I will be doing this every Friday. Um, tonight I started at 10 because of the Ch Chess Punk Awards, but um, every week it'll be 9 to 12 EST um, on Friday nights. It's just tonight that'll be uh, 10 to 12. Okay. So I feel like Black's starting to finally realize that there's going to be a lot of issues on this D file. Um, the good thing is here though, they can play rook c8 now with a tempo. Um, it depends, so, like, just sorry to answer your question, Seth. Like, for example, tonight there's only one game, so I'm playing a game. Um, if, if I have four games I'm commentating on, I'm not going to bother starting one of my own, because... I want to be able to get to all the games without focusing all my time on mine. Um, yeah, so it's just tonight because I'm only I've, there's only one game here, um, and I hadn't had any games sent to me earlier, so I assumed it would be a slower night, which it is. Um, but I feel like once I get into the routine of doing this, and then the show gets a little more established, more people will uh, come by and play games. Hopefully. Alright, so still no move for my opponent. Um, I don't know, I'm just really happy with my position here. See, I don't even, like, I could play f3 now. But I feel like what happens there is they play c4, and then after takes, there's knight takes, and then this is going to get really strong. So I'm just going to play b takes now, and just not worry at all, right? Like... On b7? I mean, mine's not great on b2. I have to find a way to open this up. Okay. So we have queen b3 from Rosenberg. Um... Yeah, this just looks really ugly.
Yeah, we'll have to wait and see, Seth. I don't know. I'll just hope and pray. Lock chess is the best way to play. Yeah, like, this is already falling apart for black. Like, there's... This has to be, like, close to lost. <laughs> I don't know. Black's not going to be getting that pawn back because the bishop's hanging. They have to play bishop e7. Sorry, uh, bishop f8 or c5. But on c5, there's b4. So e7 is the only move here. So e7, f6. f8. f8's the only move here. Um, queen c5 also fails to b4. White could go after black's bishop with like queen a4 but again b4 would stop that so maybe like if they play queen c5 b4 or queen c4 takes takes and like e6 okay bishop h4 um yeah i don't know i'm thinking <laughs> I'm thinking black just, I mean white just takes and then plays f4 and just tries to rip this king open. e6 is going to come at such a good time. Um, yeah, alright. Oh no, okay, so here's the trap. So, yeah, so this knight is now trapped. Um, I'm still deciding if I want to play knight b6 with a tempo first. And just hit the rook. Um, yeah. F3, knight g5, h4. Wins the knight on e4. But again, I'm looking at this first. And then after the rook moves, because like I, honestly, I'm kind of looking at queen a5. Because one way I see white getting it, uh, no, that doesn't get them out of it. I don't know. Um. Yeah, knight b6. I'm assuming work b8, a, f3, knight g5, h4, knight h7. Right. I missed that. Um, I mean, okay, so maybe I do... Okay, I'm going to start with knight b6 and just, you know, take some more space. I can try and start with h4 then. Oh, I see you said h7, but um, just so you know, please don't comment on my game. Um, I don't want any help from the chat on that regard. Um, but you're free to comment on the other game. Still, you could see a miraculous tactic and win me the game without me doing anything on my own accord. Um, see, like, yeah, here I want to play h4, because, like, this very may well win a piece. Well, no, the only, the only way to save the piece for white, for black, would be to play knight h7 after h4 
Um, another idea I'm looking at is F4 and then F5 and try to crack that open. Um, Bishop takes a6, I guess, is possible, but it's not super beneficial. I could play a4, but then if a5... Wow, I could just play... I could just play queen e2, and that wins the pawn. Sorry, queen e1. Um, okay. Yeah, so a few different plans here. So I've got a4, a5, f4, f5, or h4 and f3. So h4, knight, knight h7, f3. Um, knight f6, g3. I'm going to sit on this one for a second. I just, I need to do something with my dark squared bishop. And the one issue about f3 is it does close this in, and I don't really want to play e4, because then, excuse me, uh, black can just play d takes e4, and then I'll have a backwards pawn on my own. So I think my goal here should just be to break, like, around here and just leave the center. Um, I just need to be sure there's no immediate drawbacks to f4. Actually, whoa, here's an idea, h4, knight h7, knight d7, and that wins a rook. Unless I'm missing something, I'm pretty sure, like, what I was calculating was right, like knight h7 is the only way to save the piece on e4. So, it's a little outlandish, but I'm gonna play h4. Oh no, that doesn't work. h4, f3, there's knight g3. I need to find a way to kick that knight. H4, G4, G5. It doesn't work. Hmm. I'm going to sit on that one. I'm going to go check in over here. So, wow, okay, so there hasn't been a move since we've been here last. Still bishop g5. Huh. Okay, I guess I can go back to and calculate my game. Um, there's no... So Rosenberg's been thinking for a while now. This is one of his first bigger thinks. He spent about three minutes right there, but that's it. Yeah, he spent three minutes on e4. Because that's, a, yeah, that's a critical position. Oh, e6, okay. Yeah, so here's this idea that I wanted. So yeah, so if, just to show people, if takes here, then this just gets back the piece. 
after queen takes h4, and now white just has this pawn that's going to roll after rook e1. Uh, maybe rook c, c8, sorry, rook c1 and rook c7. e7. Um, some sort of plan like that. So black here needs to come up with something. Although I'm curious after just f takes e6. White might be calculating here. And if bishop f6 just take, take. And then maybe just lift the rook to d3 and put it here. And black's in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. They'd have to do something like this. But no, that just loses because there's check. So they have to wonder what white's even gonna do. I mean black can even do there. Cause there's no there's no way to defend this. You know, like the only other way is is to run. But that just loses as well. Or something like this, I think. Yeah, you have to go here. Yeah. So you're looking at from here. Oh no, you're looking at in that line that I was talking about. So yeah, here, here. I mean, yeah. I don't know if black runs that way though. With rook g3 coming, it's just a lot of pressure. I mean, this this is just lost, like right there. So I don't really know what black does after e6. Um, you can't take, you can't not take. You can't really play f6, because that actually falls to this. That's another threat right now. That's a great move from Rosenberg. That's really well timed. It's just, like what, what does black even have here to do? Pawn breaks are so important, like, this could just be the winning move. Their best line may to actually be this, to do this. And just, you know, try to fight it out with the miners. I mean, with the, the major pieces against that pawn. I mean, black does have a pass pawn of their own, but it's going to be really hard for, for black to find any concrete plan here to stop this. Um, yeah, so e6, let's see, any moves yet? No. Alright, I'm gonna hop back over here. <coughs> uh, excuse me, okay. See, like, I'm really thinking hard about bishop takes a6, but it's just, like, not enough. It's just not enough. And I like the idea of queen a4, but it runs into issues. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, after, so, like, queen a4... Um, knight d2, rook d1, knight b3, forks. No, sorry, no it doesn't, what am I saying? <coughs> I'm blind. Um, okay. Because I'm just curious, how does black, like, actually defend that pawn? I 
I have to be careful for sacrifice tactics here too. That's exactly my thought process. <clears throat> I'm like, yeah, bishop, like bishop takes a6, bishop takes a6, knight takes c6, and then like even just queen c7 or queen e8, and black's probably fine. I mean, I'm getting two pawns and a rook, but it's, they're not connected, and it's a pawn chain, and I have to, I'd have to time that right, because they're still going to have their light squared bishop there. Oh yeah, and when they retake, they're hitting my rook on e1 on f1, so that doesn't look good. Like I just had this weird moment of being terrified of like queen a4, bishop takes c5. D takes C5, Knight takes C5. And then like Queen B4. I don't know. I don't know. Um I need to play something though. Okay, we're going to start with f3. Yeah, we're going to start with f3. Yeah, it's okay, Sonny. <laughs> it's easy to forget because I'm hopping between games. Yeah, so my idea here, I'm going to play f3. Uh, Knight's going to go back to g4, and then I'm going to play queen a4, just to get rid of any of those sacrificing ideas. Um, there might not even be any there, but I don't know for sure. So I just want to have to not calculate that. Because I'm pretty sure if I can play queen a4 and there's no sacks, I just get the a6 pawn for free. Because they can't play rook a8 unless they want to give up the exchange. I mean, that knight is probably worth it at this point. Because it's so freaking strong. Um, another idea I could have is... See, so, you no, know, I don't, I, I don't want to pull the knight from d3. Um, just because, yeah, if I pull the knight from d3, then they have knight d7. My idea was, like, knight d3 to d2, sorry, d3 to b4 to a6. But again, it's just not quite in time. And the, the beauty of this position is that black can never move the f6 knight because then I have boom, knight d7. And I'm winning a piece over there. Or some material in, the, in exchange. This is the kind of position that you have to just like slowly, slowly improve your pieces. Like... So my bishop's bad. Like, worst piece on the board for white. Bishop on B b2. So where do I want that? I mean, like, I could... Ooh, that's actually an idea. I could play bishop c3. Okay, so they're sacrificing right now. That's bold. Hmm. I don't know about that one yet. Okay, we're just going to take play knight a4. Take c3 and then king h1. Now we got a game.
All right, let's hop back over here. Wow, look. <laughs> it's the exact line I was talking about. So, yeah, just rook d3 here. It happened, yeah. d6 takes, bishop e5, bishop f6 takes, takes, and now rook d3. Um, and black could probably resign, I think. Um, yeah, rook d3. I knew it. <laughs> it's just a very obvious line. Black honestly didn't really have much to do in that position. e6 was probably resignable, but it's worth to play out a one of the lines just to see it. Um, yeah. Like, you can't play rook f8 trying to do this. Um, sorry, one sec. Yeah, you can't do this, because that just falls. You're getting mated. Um, you can't go to h7 or anything, because again, you do this. And I mean, okay, maybe rook h8 now. I mean, rook g8 now. But the beauty of this is you can just do, like I don't even know. You can just come to c7, I mean f7, and if takes, you let them take back, and you just, you're opening up this file. And this is gonna get malicious really quick. This queen on a5 is just really out of play. So it's hard for black to know where to put this, like here, rook takes f6, and this is just lost. Um, only delaying move is here and then here and then you know blacks is getting mated on h6 um, queen c5 I mean, but like, Black's White's just getting this check now, so it's like, I mean, if here, you can't go to H, AJ because you get mated, so here, you go here, in the line I was looking at, sorry, which was that, King G8, here, Queen C8, no, I'm, I'm and then here, here and then queen c5 sorry if I have the line wrong I'm just trying to um, if this was the line you're looking at I mean just queen takes f6 check here and like white doesn't even have to do anything special just take pawns like what you're already up two pawns in this position oh wait no because there's this so you have to you have to do this first uh, and I'm Rosenberg he's just a player um, in the dojo that I'm commenting on right now. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I missed the idea after here. There's just rook takes g3. That drops the rook, which is not what you want. In the rook takes g3, f takes g3 variation. Uh, f takes g3. Oh, so queen c... Oh, okay, queen... Oh, okay, right, right, right. Um, again, like the same idea... I think I just want to do this, and then again, like, black's kind of falling. Uh, I am playing a game actually right now, but uh, I'm, this is not the one I'm, because I'm doing commentary on it, other games as well. Um, yeah, so like, black could try this, or I mean, I don't know, maybe they go here, like, rook d8. And then, but then there's like takes check here, here, 
and then they can try to push the pawn. But white will get behind it in time to defend everything as well. And then these pawns are just going to roll. Yeah, but like the question is how does how does black defend these, right? Yeah. Um. Rook e8, rook takes here, here, here. Oh yeah, and then I guess e5. And white can't really get in behind these easy. Like if b4 here, this will just lose right away. Actually, no, you push this guy first. Here, here. Like, you can try to bring the king in, I guess, but it's... Do this. Check. Here. I don't know. I could browse this for a while, but... I'm gonna check in with this quickly. Okay, so it's still Steve's move. Um, yeah, so I think the only move to survive here is king g8. Sorry, king h8. With rook g8 coming next. So we'll check back in with that in a bit. I'm going to come over here. Okay, so d6. I mean, d4. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. Like, white has just... I don't know, I think that the king can get back in time to blockade the two passers, like in that one line I showed you. I don't know if that's exactly correct, but I think that's what white goes for. And then, yeah, they just push the the queen side pawns. And if the king can get in a decent setup where they don't have to... Um, that the, where white doesn't have to use the rook to defend... Um, then yeah, like I, I still think it's completely winning for white. But I mean, we'll have to see. Black needs to find, um, yeah, black needs to find king h8 first. This game's getting a little crazy though, so I need to calculate a little. I have a piece for three pawns. I think I want to go to knight c5. Yeah. I thought about bishop takes a6 there. And then knight takes. But I don't know, that kind of runs into its own problems. And I will probably play bishop c1 soon. just to try to trade that off. So okay, we can look at this a little more. Um, okay, so king, G, king h8, rook g3, rook g8, queen, C, queen f7, takes, takes, queen c5, King h2, I guess. Queens f8. Um, okay, so like there is this line that I saw, but white, I mean, white could also just take on e6 then as well. Um, and like, rook, okay, let's see what he moved, so. Oh no, he played king f8. King, yeah, this just has to be over. Um, Yeah, the issue here after after rook f8, 
Like you don't have any way to defend that side of the board. Um, and you can't, again, the same issue, you can't do this. Um, you can't play rook e7 because of the queen g7 mate. Yeah, yeah. I think honestly either or queen h7 is probably a little more correct. Um, yeah. So he went for this. I think what he wants to do is to play the check first, get the king over to e8, and then play queen h7. Yeah, the the king's just dead here. Like, um, white's black's queen is way out of position. The rook's unactive. Black could have two turns here, and it would still be losing. All right, let's come over here. So queen. What? <laughs> what is queen c7? That's not going to help you. Yeah, it's resignation time. Rook g8 is mate. Alright, so <laughs> we have this game done. Um, if they get in chat, I guess I can have a quick look at the whole thing again. So, yeah, so as I was mentioning, um, I guess h6 should have been played around now um yeah I agree Evan he is he's a really nice guy um yeah so I, yeah so this was the Moscow right and then you play like Bishop e7 I don't know if you put it on f6 or not but yeah you play like f5 I believe Queen d8. Oh, queen takes f6. Okay. I thought, I don't know, I thought g takes f6 was a line. I thought I had seen it somewhere where you play f5 after. There's some opening I'm thinking of. It's like, it's like this. Takes here and then takes, and then like black plays like f5. I don't know. It could be really bad, but I guess white can just play e4. Yeah, this looks really bad, actually. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Bishop c7. What move was that, Steve?
Oh right, right. Yeah. So I actually, I actually saw this like not at not E six. I mean, I didn't see E six right away. Um, but yeah, like I was telling Chat Steve, I think you're actually lost right after E six. Um, just because. Like, it's really hard for black to come up with anything here. Because if takes, there's queen takes. And then after king h8, like, white just has this pawn rolling. Um, and again, like, this is exactly what I was saying. Like, bishop here. Like, yeah, you could play this. But the issue is, like, just rook e7. Oh, I know. That falls. That makes that fall. Um, yeah, like, this one's the exchange, but... Again, I think, yeah, bishop e5 is just a lot stronger. Because, again, you're threatening the mate, and the only move to stop mate is this. And it just rips open the king, and then, yeah, rook d3. And it's hard for, it's hard for white to do, uh, black for, for black to do anything here. Um, your queen was very offside. This rook was um, not in development. My, like, where I pointed out what I thought the mistake was, was um, recapturing, well, I guess, okay, this was kind of okay, but I thought, um, here, you should take with the C pawn. Because when, like, when you're, when you take, when you leave a pawn in the center like this, at least from, like, my knowledge of the game, you kind of run into some issues because, um, like you don't have, like take the trash opening for example, right? Like you have a bishop on e6 to defend that pawn and the rooks can come to c8 and e8 really easily. But here, like it's, it's again, it's really hard for you to defend this position because, especially because this e5 pawn, it's really easy for black to, for white to target the d5 pawn and make stuff happen on the king side. Um, so I was thinking here, like, D t C takes D5 was a lot stronger. Um, if B4, like, you can you can honestly just play queen D8. And black's doing fine, I think. And, like, white can't keep this pin because rook C8's coming. Um, you could play queen c7 at some point, try to play f5, bishop f5 maybe, something like this. Queen b3. B one H seven, yeah. A two B one. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying like in terms of pawn structure, I think this is more solid than what happened in the game. I don't know. Because this isn't super pleasant for black either to play against. Um, anyway. Oh yeah, Steve, I was going to show you at the end of the game. Um, so when you played king f8, I think the only move you had to defend, like to hold on a little longer, was king h8. Um... Because if here, now you at least can play rook g8, <clears throat> right? So my idea here was, and I got some help from the chat, but queen, yeah, queen f7 uh, takes, takes, queen c5, king h2, queen f7, and then you can just take on, d on e6. Uh, and like, it's... It's probably still lost, but there's more practical chances for black. Like, I don't know. 
because in the in the other position it's just it's just getting mated. But I have no I have no and I have no doubt that Evan could convert this position as white. But yeah, um, yeah, like King H8 just survives a little longer. Yeah, sure. So I was just saying here. So after G takes F6, Rook D3. You should go king h8 instead of king f8. And then after rook g3, rook g8. Um, so you say, okay, queen f7 here. And I guess if rook f8, you just come here. Yeah, that looks pretty good too. I mean, yeah, you can take e6, but I kind of like this. Yeah. I, I, I honestly would argue with you, Evan, that queen g6 is stronger than taking on e6. Or maybe not. Maybe there's just queen c7 here. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I don't know. Listen to Yasser Sirwan. Just take the pawn. Anyway, I'm, gonna, I'm getting low on time on my game, so I'm going to hop over here. Um, I have a very intense position going on. <laughs> um, so e5 is just played. Right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, so here I want to play bishop c8. c8, c1, I think. Um, just trying to trade off that bishop. Because this bishop's really good, and this one's horrible. So... And I need to start liquidating a little bit. So, like, if I can take, like, if I can play here, he's not going to let me take on e3 because then I just get a strong structure again. So probably takes and then rook takes and then I can like take on b7 even and play like rook c5. Um. Yeah. So I'm going to play bishop c1 here. I do have a significant time disadvantage. So there's that. Yeah, so just to give Steve and Evan the rundown of what happened over here. So I basically had a really nice pawn structure, and then black went and ruined it for me and made me have to play actual chess. Um, and we're just kind of in this position now where black has three pawns, I have an extra piece. So I'm going to see what I can do to try to... Oh, excuse me. Um, convert this if I can. I have really strong knights, so I have that going for me, at least. It's just I have to find a way to get my bishops active quick. Maybe after, if bishop takes c1, maybe I just take with the queen, play bishop d1 to b3 instead.
Okay. I will have to start moving a little quicker. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, there's not really... I don't know, can, can Black leave this and maybe try to set something else up? Like maybe Rook D8 takes, takes. But I think what I do there is just play Queen C3. Sorry, Queen C2. And like try to get a Knight before. Exactly. Keep me busy. We have another 45 minutes on here. Yeah, so this is going to be like a, a weekly thing. Um, I'll be doing it every Friday. Tonight was, I think I mentioned that earlier in the stream, but it was just for anyone else who showed up late. Um, it's going to be 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. EST every Friday. Um, Tonight was just 10 to 12 because of the um, the Chess Punk Awards, so they needed that extra hour. <laughs> yes, Mr. Charlie Silva. My middle name is Jackson. Yep. Oh. Okay, so knight. Hmm. Okay. Um. Hmm. Um, so the ladder is, I mean, like, it's sort of arena-like, so you can play as many games as you want within the ladder season. Um, I don't remember exactly when this one goes till, but I believe it's season six right now. Um... So basically you just, you get, you have your belt color, right? I think you know that much. Um, and you can play anyone within a belt's higher or lower view. Um, so like, for example, I'm a brown belt, so I could play against red belts or uh, brown, other brown belts or purple belts. Um, and then they just do that. So, you know, like, you know, Rosenberg isn't crushing on all the 500, 600, new players in the dojo who are just trying to learn the game <laughs> um yeah <laughs> uh, you should want to play as many masters as you possibly can steve the experience is so important Man, that's going to be annoying. Yeah, okay, I'm going to take... And then after takes, queen c... Queen c1, I guess.
No, you have to play blindfold, rook, and queen odds, and you have to move your pawns one at a time. You're not allowed to castle, and you have to move both your flank pawns. Chess Latte is a really good player, actually. We've played a couple times. Very good games. Strong player. Okay. How does we do this? Yeah, just here. Yes, just make sure you guys uh, send me the game so I can pull it up. Yeah. And I'm Rosenberg. I was telling... Um, I was telling Steve... Well, in the whole chat about our game and the... The verified tournament, you're my only loss. <laughs> but I mean, I finished 4 out of 6, I'm honestly not too upset. I got a draw against Tuan, who's like a 2200, so... 23? 22? I think. Here's me just trying to keep my Lee Chess Rapid above 2100. This guy's like 2100chess.com. I mean, like, I don't know. Honestly, I feel like the chance of beating a GM or a titled player is a lot easier in Blitz. Like, it's just, like, the fundamental... I don't know, like, you can have someone who's... Like, I've seen players on Chess at Calm, on Lee Chess, who are 25, 2600 in Blitz and Bullet, but then they'll be, like, 18 to 2000 in Rapid and Classical. So it's like... They can move fast, but their, their chess might not be good. They just, they just know how to move quick. They know how to pull the cheap crap on people. And a lot of people fall for the cheap crap, tr trust me. So it's like... I don't know. So a player that might not be that good at chess can maybe move faster than some GMs because they don't play a lot of those sh shorter time controls. Queen d4, I have a few different ideas. Hey, Italian machine. Good to see you. All right, it's in the Discord. I will pop this open. Let me snatch that. Chat Italian Machine is another national master from Canada. Okay. All right, so let's have a look here. So we have a Queen's Gambit declined. Um, chess Latte playing white. Rosenberg playing black. 
this is pretty standard stuff. Um, hmm. Oh, Italian machine? Yeah, he is. Right, Bishop d3. So this game will develop through the theory for a bit. Yeah, so this was the move I was thinking would be played. Um, now, I want, I'm looking at knight b3. So, yeah, my two candidate moves are knight b3 and rook d1. If rook d1, knight f4, knight takes f4, if queen takes f4, then I have knight d7, in which case I'll just go up a full rook. Um, rook d8... Sorry, rook d1. I'm just trying to find a way to win this e pawn. I think I do like rook d1. Because, like, there's knight b3. And then, I don't know, how does, the, how does it get defended then? I don't know, I just want to keep my knights in the center. I'm not too worried about queen h4 because I can just play queen takes e3 and then if knight g3 check just king g1. Okay, so we have, yeah, this is looking, again, pretty standard. I don't know if we'll get through this whole game, because we only have about half an hour left of the stream. Um, but we'll see how far this takes us. What other guy? <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, no worries, Steve. Thanks for stopping by and good game tonight. You put up a good fight. I will see you soon. Sleep well. Alright, so just knight c6. Oh, are you talking about Scott? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> this is just the time slot I'm going to be using for the next. I don't know how long. I don't. There's not really an end date. End date in mind. Um, yeah, exactly. He just had a kid, so he's a little, little preoccupied. Can't blame him for not being here. Yeah, so we're just kind of getting this almost symmetrical looking setup. You guys don't mind, I'm going to step away just for one second. I need to get some water. I will return in a minute. Okay, sorry about that, I'm back. Um, this isn't quite a Tarash. It's not a traditional Tarash. Cause like, black can technically avoid getting the, the isolated deep on here. Um, I mean, it's probably gonna play into one, but. And this is kind of what I was talking about in the last game between Steve North. Um, like the idea here is like white's black's gonna get this bishop on e6 and it just really supports this pawn well. Versus what happened in the last game. Um, where he took with the bishop first and so on. Okay, that move. It's not a good move. I don't think. There's a few issues with that move, actually. I have two different forks I could do right now. But now I'm just slightly worried about like F4.
I kind of want to just play knight b4. Knight b4, queen h4, queen takes e3. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, queen takes e3, knight, eight, knight g3 check, king g1, and I'm pretty sure I'm fine. I'm fine. So yeah, just knight b3. I mean knight b4. I mean, I also could just force a queen trade, but I don't like, I don't love that. Um, this game, I'm on move 26. Okay, so yeah, there's that. But again, so I have a few different options here. Well, like it's it. I'm just gonna be up a rook. Like it'll just be a, a clear rook because. Queen c4 check, queen takes c4, bishop takes c4, king wherever, knight, knight d7, say, I don't know, rook fd8, knight takes b8, rook takes b8, rook b1, Or maybe g3. And then if f4, g4, kick the knight back to f6. Um, or there's the sharper line of queen takes e3. But I see no reason to keep the queens on here. I feel confident that I can convert this, but, you know, they still have three pawns for my piece, so. It's going to be three pawns for the rook. Alright, let's hop back over here. Okay, let's see. Okay, so if takes, takes, rookie one, c4, bishop f1, bishop g4. Again, this is still kind of theoretical, I think. Um, I don't see any major ideas that are different from what I've seen before. White's going to try to get an e4. Black's going to try to keep controlling that. a6, b5, control the queenside pawn race. So on. Um, 
Okay, so there's that. And then knight d7. But the, be the beauty of this is I could always give back a piece if I need to for the pawns and still be up the exchange. So. Yeah. Here I'm just going to play rook d7 and just go for um, like rook e8. As long as I have one rook on the back rank here, I'm going to be fine. Like knight f4 looks scary, but again, rook e8, there's no way that the e pawn will fall. Stuff like that. Okay, let's check in with our friends over here. So bishop e2 now. I feel like maybe he shouldn't have retreated to f1 in the first place. Just go to e2. Because um, if... Because I mean like if... Like here, bishop g4. Just play h3. Kick the kick the bishop back. I mean, you could even go like ah, uh, not that. Oops. G four. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you can get an e four yet. But no, maybe here. Knight h four. Just saying. Okay, I'm gonna take on g six. Play e four and just try to crack this open. Okay, yeah, so here, and then we'll jump to e8, and I mean just all of Black's pawns are falling here. I'm threatening to win three different pawns right now. I need to be careful to not get into an unfavorable ending, like a, like as long as it, yeah, I just need to keep this rook advantage and maybe not sacrifice the exchange, like to just be up the exchange, I mean, it's going to take a lot of maneuvering, but, like I'm down on time, but I'm not super pressed yet, like this is fine. I've been in worse time predicaments before. Like, I feel like if I was commentating on this, I'd probably say this is just winning, but 
because it's my own game, I'm trying to be a little conservative about my statements. I've messed up better positions before. The good part though is like if the knight does go to f4, like the bishop on c4 is just going to keep dominating it. Okay, so just f4. Alright, so I can just take on e5, hit the knight. Take on c6. Um. Is that supposed to be scary? Now I'm more more than fine with just sacrificing a piece for one of these pawns. I'll just come here. Should about sealed this game up. Um. Looking at bishop d3 check. <coughs> Excuse me. Drop in over here for a little while. Wait, so we're. Oh, whoops. Okay, yeah, so this was kind of the idea I was talking about. Oh, he resigned. Okay. Well, that was a good game. Um, I will do some analysis of this one in a second. I just want to catch up on the other game really quick. And then I will come back here. Um, yeah, so... As I was saying, I think the idea of bishop f1 was a little bad, um, just because move 26. Hmm. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll have a look at that in a sec. A sec. I just want to look here. Yeah, so as I was saying, I think bishop e2 is a little more correct. Yeah. Um, 
Just because like white wasted a move putting the bishop back a square. And black really wasted no time. So now there's a huge threat coming, right? I, I mentioned this, a6, b5. There's a huge threat coming of b4, c, uh, c3. Um, yeah. White's probably going to try to play for e4, I think. Because, you know, strike on the side. If it's strike on the flank, you strike in the center. But the issue is d4 will hang. So, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I mean. This is really good for black. Um, yeah, like it's, it's, again, it's one of those positions where it's hard to find a plan for white. Anyway, I'm going to do a quick analysis of my game. Um, okay, so, yeah, we have this English attack. I, I have uh, Sam Shanklin's... Uh, lifetime d4 repertoire and he proposes this move in that so that's why I played that early a3 um, whoops uh, I didn't mean to do that uh, sorry over here do this yeah so that's why I played a3 after e6 um, just because b4 is a very... Hey, Festivity. That was a good game. Thanks for playing with me tonight. Um, I'm glad to have been able to play during the stream. Um, yeah, so just after bishop e7... Sorry, after a3, black really only has e7 for the development. Um... Yeah, like c5, I don't know if this was amazing, but um, here, let me hop to analysis really quick. Yeah, like my other plan besides c5, I think I mentioned, was to play knight d2, and then at some point push f3. And then, I don't know, maybe try to get an e4, but I wouldn't have played c5 in that case. Well, yeah, like, I don't know if you would just caught what I said, but I have Shanklin's 1d4 course, and he's really big on this early a3. Um, it just forces black to restrict their play. And I mean, I got a, I got a fairly strong position, like right here. The fact that you had to bail out with a sacrifice, um, I mean, it gives you it gives you a lot of initiative, but I think my knights are just a little too powerful here. It's hard for Black to really push the issue, especially after Queen C1, um, Rook D1. So that he was saying I move 26. So here, one a piece. Rook B1. See, my issue with this was I was looking at this. I mean, I guess I can just do here, but I don't know. I mean, like, I knew that this fork was coming anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, like... The sack's a good, like, it's good that you have an eye for that stuff, because, like, F3, if you just go back to G4, G5, like, I don't know. After something like H4 here, what does black really have going for them? Because I want to play, I mean, I don't know if I'd actually play H4. I might. Um, but after knight H7, like, bishop C3... This bishop's all about, all of a sudden going to become really active. So I'm either I'm either going to put it on a5 or here on b3, and it's going to be really strong. Meanwhile, your dark squared bishop's bad. Your light squared bishop literally has nothing to do. Yeah. 
Yeah, rook b4 in that one position. Um, yeah. I wanted to make festivity. I wanted to make like something like this work at some point. But I felt like after like queen c7 or even just queen e8, like white's, I don't know, not doing great because you're just hitting the piece. And if I take here, then you'll take here first and after take. So I'm just losing a piece. I mean, I mean, I have two pawns for it, but they are not good pawns to try and win there. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's just, it's hard to figure out. I don't know. My knights were just so strong in this position, even though my, my light squared, my dark squared bishop was bad. Again, it's like, what is black going to do? can try to send the pawns, but after I exchange the bishop, a doubled pawn on e3 is not an issue for me. And here, I like I don't know if I had to trade queens again. I think I could just do this and allow this in king g1. Um, although I kind of looked at like f4, f5. But I mean, I can just do, I can actually throw this check in first. Oh no, I can do this. Eh, I'm looking at this, but this gets a little dangerous. Here, here, here. And there's a lot of threats of that. So maybe I just... After this moves, and maybe I just... I don't know. Maybe just bishop c4. Or actually bishop... Um, bishop d3, just controlling this knight until I'm ready to take. Otherwise, like, this will have to come back. And then, again, this fork is always in the position. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Any other spots anyone wanted to see specifically? Or... I don't know. I like seeing it from my opponent's point of view too. It helps me notice if I miss anything. Yeah, like if you, like, I don't know. These structures, festivity, are not great. And like, at your rating, I feel like you might get wins in this kind of thing. Just because a lot of players don't know what they're doing. But, you know, the kind of structure I set up, it just, I don't know. It's really easy for white to get an advantage and keep it in this line, in this opening. Um, so like if you're not going to fight back with something like c5, like I think here c5 is, is probably good, then it's, it's not the strongest opening choice. Um, yeah. Move six. Knight f three. Yeah, I mean, th I mean, this kind of transposed, but with the English defense, like the b six stuff. I don't know. Like I, I, I stay true to d four, but someone who plays e four, like. Yeah, and see, that's that's where the issue comes in. Like, I don't know. I don't know how advanced you are with your opening knowledge, but, like, it's, it's generally, like, if you're going to play a modern opening, this is not really the way to play it. Because, again, it's really easy for white to get, like, an advantage here. At least I find. Like... I, I think e4 is like a stronger reply. Uh, um, yeah, that's true. What I would suggest, if you, like if you want to play this kind of structure, maybe go into a Queen's Indian defense instead, which is like knight f6, uh, c4, e6, 
And it's usually played against the Bogo. Um, so b6 now. And then the idea is like you can kind of, I, I play the what's, what's called like a hedgehog kind of system sometimes as black. So like here, um, bishop b7, e3, bishop e7, uh, bishop d3, and then you play d6, not d5. And the idea is like if they have e4 on the board, they're never going to be able to get an e5. Because what you're doing is, like, say, castles here, you're playing c5 with more support. And, like, this, this kind of structure comes out through a lot of different um, opening lines. Like, there's the, there's the Sicilian version in e4 openings after e4, c5, uh, here, d6, d4 takes, takes, here, uh, knight c3, a6, usually is played in the slower, like, bishop e2 line, and then e6, uh, bishop e3, bishop e7, castles, and then, like, you play, like, I don't know, I'm just gonna make moves here, but, like, b6, queen d2, bishop b7, and what's really good about this is it's very solid, and, and black can kind of you know, it's flexible. Like, black's not getting crushed here in any means. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is just my way of approaching it. I'm sure, as you said, like, the way you played it is totally playable, but um, just going from a little more traditional standpoint, playing it where it's an improved version of what you're playing might be a little better for you. Um, yeah. That's my rant. Because, <laughs> like, when you face someone, you know, like me, I'm not trying to praise myself, but who knows what to do against, you know, a non-traditional, maybe slightly dubious opening, then it's hard for black to find equality. Um, at least that's the way I see it. I'm very, like, you know, I play main mainstream openings and stuff like that i don't believe in a lot of these kind of sideline openings but it doesn't mean they aren't playable it just means you have to know what you're doing in every different possible try from white and because it's such a non-committal play from black white can oftentimes adopt a lot of different setups um, like for example I, I play the catalan against normal stuff so if i really wanted to I could have gone into, like, um, here I could have played knight f3, knight f6, g3. And, like, you have to know what to do against this, right? Like, it's not always so simple that you can just play the normal stuff. This kind of transposes into... Um, the main line, like one, not the main line, but one of the main lines in the Catalan. After b3, uh, castles, bishop b2. Um, but yeah. Um, anyway, that is actually unfortunately times up for tonight. Um, I don't have access to the actual channel, so I can't really raid anyone. Actually, let me see about that. Um, Yeah, so that is going to be it for tonight. Um, I appreciate everyone coming to watch, um, and I will be back next Friday. So make sure you plan games and stuff. Uh, thanks, Thorbiddies. Good to see you here. Uh, yeah, I will see you guys next Friday.